everybody. This is Carolina Millan. Welcome to a new episode of Beyond the Hustle. And I'm here today with Paul Ross. He's a master hypnotist, sales trainer, and the author of a book. Thank you, Paul. It's great to have you here today. I'd love to have uh, I'm you. very excited because before we started recording, Paul told me this was going to be one of the best interviews or best episodes. No, 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 no. no, no. I said it would be the best. Okay. okay. <laughs> The best, I correct myself. The Numero best. uno del mundo. <laughs> Numero uno. Well, what are some of these techniques that you have uncovered that you could share maybe with, with our audience? You mean in dating or in sales? Because <laughs> I don't want to bother with the dating stuff. I would say in sales. <laughs> sales, okay. So my approach to sales is pretty radically different. Because to me, you, first of all, you're never selling a product or service, Carolina. You're always selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. In fact, here's a good reframe. You could look at yourself as a decision service technician. Instead of looking at yourself as a salesperson, look at yourself as a decision service technician. You're serving people in the process of their being able to make a good decision. That's the first thing. The second principle, there's just two or three, is whatever you can get the other person to imagine for themselves will be perceived by them as being their own thought. And therefore, they will not resist it. And the third thing, and here comes the really crazy thing, the uh, loco. This is a uh, totally crazy, but if you begin to look at sales in this way, you'll see yourself following a much more profitable path. And here it is. To me, selling is about creating states of consciousness. And here's what I mean. When you go into a sale, the first question you ought to be asking yourself is not, how do I present my marketing plan or how do I get rapport with that person? The first question to ask is, what state of mind do I want that person to be in? Let me give you a metaphor, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to conduct a current of electricity and I have two possible materials. I have a sheet of cardboard and a sheet of gold foil. This is not a trick question. Which one of those is going to conduct the electricity? The, the first one. <laughs> the gold. Uh, yeah. The gold, uh, not, the not gold the foil. I think. The cardboard is not going to conduct it. The gold foil will. So think of your prospect state of consciousness as being like that gold foil. What states of mind do you want to be in? Have them in. What states of mind do you want to get them into? So I think of how about states of being totally focused on your message? Because nowadays we know people can't focus. And the, the reason is this. <laughs> you know, think of this monster. People are distracted nowadays. We have Twitter. We have Facebook Instant Messenger. Now we have something called Clubhouse. They have Clubhouse there in yeah. South America. And people are totally distracted. People have the attention span of a goldfish. So we've got to get them focused. How about creating a state where they're They believe you, not only believe you, but they perceive on the unconscious level, not the conscious level, but the unconscious level, that you are a trusted leader who they have to follow. How about creating a childlike willingness to believe in what you say? My bizarre, outrageous claim is you can create those states very, very quickly. So they're like the gold foil and the electricity of your words is conducted over to them. So can you give me like an example of, sure. of you know, the right way to, to do sure. it and, and the wrong way? Uh, well, first, let me give you the wrong way. So if I was going to make a marketing presentation to a group or to one person, I the wrong way to do it, the traditional way to do it would be to say, hi, my name is Paul Ross. I'm going to be teaching you today how my software is 20% easier to use, how it integrates well with your suite of solutions. And I know you're going to find it pretty fascinating. Please ask any questions. That's the, that's the typical way to do it, correct? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Maybe you make a joke. Maybe you crack a joke. So instead, I teach my students to use what I call implied relationship words. I'll unpack that for you. These words are we explore together and share. We explore together and share. So I would say something like this. Before we explore this opportunity together, I just want to invite you. That's what I left out. I just want to invite you 
to please share the questions that naturally arise when a great decision is being made. So let's look at those words, shall we? Before we, we implies what? That we have a relationship, that we're on the same side of the table. Before we explore, when there's an exploration, for every exploration, there must be a leader. And for every leader, there must therefore be a follower. Exactly. So that implies that they're following us and we are their leader. Before we explore this opportunity together, together again implies a relationship. I just want to invite you, not ask you, invite you. If I'm extending an invitation to you, it implies that we're stepping into an agreement, doesn't it? Yep. As opposed to ask. If I'm asking you for something, then it implies that we're on the opposite side of the table and you're giving me something. You're the one who has the value, not me. Hmm. I would just like to invite you to please share, not ask, share. What's the difference between saying share the questions and ask the questions? Ask is something you do to someone. Share is something you do with someone. So Hmm. these are suggestions. They're unconscious suggestions for that unconscious mind. I'm not saying it's conscious. You don't get up there and say, hi, my name is Paul Ross. I'm your leader today. You're going to perceive me as being your trusted person, and you're going to believe what I say. Instead, to implying it through these suggestions, you create that state of mind where they want to believe you, where they see you as their leader. We've all heard it's important to get rapport, correct? Yeah, yeah. I say leadership is even better than rapport. Once they view you as their leader, the rapport will flow naturally. People have it asked backwards. If I could, sorry, I don't know if I'm (laughs) said a naughty word there, but people have it asked backwards. They say, get rapport, and then you can establish leadership. I say, use the power of suggestion to create that leadership, and then the rapport will naturally flow from that. So another thing that you, that you told me you, you specialize in is uh, mindset. Yes. So for, for a lot of people in order to sail and, you know, even if you give them the pattern interrupts, even if you give them the, the, all right. of the formulas, if they're not in the right mindset, it's probably not going to work. So what do you right. do to help people overcome negative beliefs or limiting beliefs? Well, the first thing I, I learned to do this again, when I was a dating coach, I was working with guys who are 30, 40, even I have to say in two or three examples, they were 50 year old virgins. They've never even kissed a wow. woman. Yeah. 50? And so you can wow. imagine 50. And so you can imagine the shame and the pain and the negativity of those guys. So I had to figure out how to get those guys out of it. That's how I learned this stuff. Now, if I can take 30, 40, some of the most self shaming, screwed up, negative thinking people and clear them up, then I can take a reasonably successful, reasonably confident person watching this or, and or listening to it and help them out. So the first thing you have to recognize when it comes to mindset is that in a battle between the conscious and the unconscious mind, the unconscious mind is always going to win. The unconscious mind is the very place where the decisions are made. Mm-hmm. If you imagine an iceberg, 20% of the iceberg or 10% is on the surface and the rest is beneath the surface, is below. So we have to recognize the power of the unconscious mind. But you know what? Rather than give the explanation, I'm going to give three words. Let me give you three words that you're in. I'm going to give a gift, a bonus. I, I normally, I, I, if the, I have your permission to give a bonus that I only yes. give to my VIP clients. Yes. All right, here's the bonus. I'm going to give you three words, and I don't know how it would translate into Spanish. But in English, it works like this. So if someone comes to me with a negative belief and says, I can't make my prospecting calls very well, or I can't close the big money clients, things like that, I teach them to say three words, up until now. Up until now, it was my experience, I couldn't close the big money clients. Up until now, it was my experience that I didn't exercise discipline in making my calls. Up until now, those three words, up until now, they get 
rapport with the unconscious mind. They say, okay, unconscious mind, I acknowledge I've had a big problem. So I understand. They get rapport with the unconscious mind. They take that negative belief and they bind it in time. So it's no longer about the present and a pledge to the future. It's just what happened in the past. Mm 